Life inside U.S. $4 billion gigantic submarine. Nowadays, being able to act obscure is vital to the triumph of military operations. Thanks to submarines, most of such tactical and covert missions are made achievable. Billions of dollars are therefore exhausted in developing these enormous submarines to prepare them for these incredibly important duties. On the rough seas in Sweden, submarine creator Save Cockums is manufacturing a new class of air-independent propulsion submarines. In one of its factories, the company's proficiency is based on more than 100 years of experience, during which it has provided seven submarine classes across three continents. The company fetches workers from different areas together in cross-functional teams to develop solutions for state-of-the-art vessels. The team deploys a completely digitized workflow founded on model-based definition to accumulate parts and information together to keep product data protected. Once ready, submarine components are scrutinized rigorously to make sure they will keep sailors safe as well as meet the necessities of the Navy. In what SAVE described as one of the largest hyperbaric testing chambers in the world, large components are examined at high pressures that equal the depth of 5,200 feet. Before finalizing the submarine, it is tradition to host what is called a keel laying ceremony. Many times the initials of the ship's sponsors are welded onto the steel plate that is installed in the ship. Once the submarine has been fully built and undergone all of its trials and sea trials, commissioning takes place. Of course, the submarine must be regarded as capable of joining its allotted fleet and accomplishing its missions up to standard. At the commissioning event, it is anticipated that the ship's sponsors are in attendance, as well as leading dignitaries, public officials, and the media. Once the ship's flag is hoisted and the ship is officially manned by its crew, it formally becomes a U.S. Navy ship. However, submarines are not perfect and will necessitate occasional maintenance to do this. The vessels commonly used, what is referred to as a dry dock, is a narrow basin that can be drained of water and enable the ship inspection and renovations. This can signify anything from routine maintenance to significant repairs and overhauling components of the submarine. Midlife improvements are also made in a dry dock including the advancement of technology and combat systems upgrades and general overhauls. To attain the dry dock, large vessels frequently need the assistance of a tugboat to aid them in maneuvering. These tugboats are planned with the purpose of pushing and towing large barges, boats, or ships. There's also a submarine rescue service if required. Each tugboat has a varied requirement based on its docking location, which can entail anything from port traffic volume and types of ships the tugboat will be towing within its domain. Once the submarine is prepared to return to sea again, the dry dock is inundated with water. Just as with docking, undocking a ship is complicated and necessitates careful planning and teamwork across the whole shipyard. A tugboat tows the ship out of the inundated dry dock, same as to how it was brought in to assist the ship completely undock. Then it is prepared to rejoin its fleet, though sailors may be ready to get back out to sea. Life on board a submarine is anything but ordinary for the normal person. United States Naval Fast Attack or Guided Missile Submarines are usually stationed for about six months, meanwhile ballistic missile submarines are sent out for three. Navy submarine sailors are commonly affiliated to a submarine for about three years. They are required to take on shore duty for two to three years after that. Sailors who work on a submarine have no connection to cellular service or even have windows. However, many do get to relish exceptional food. For the crew of the nuclear-powered Virgin-class submarine USA South Dakota, the food is said to be delicious. The crew of seven culinary specialists aboard the ship is in charge of the meals. They normally begin arrangements four hours before each mealtime. Some of the meals include pizza, omelets, bread pudding, and giant cookie dessert bars. The culinary team provides the crew of 135 submariners with food three to four times a day, each day the ship is out on deployment, which is where the crew dines is adorned to make it more amusing for the team. 
Although parts of the deployment may be relishing, it is also tricky, particularly when crew members spend weeks submerged under the water. With little to do but work and sleep, submarines are often reported as cramped with small halls for walking and small beds for sleeping in. Work shifts alter every six to eight hours on board the submarine, and every day crew member do a different job. This necessitates that all sailors on board the ship must be efficient. Submarines must prepare their own water and oxygen, and how long a submarine can function usually relies on how much food it can carry. In the middle of the submarine is the control room, both in a physical and operational sense. From the moment a submarine starts its journey and heads to sea, it is increasingly in operation and everyone must comprehend their task. Everyone from a sailor to a commander has a crucial job. These enormous submarines hence do not rely on their robust mechanisms alone, but also the service of devoted sailors who normally have to remain for many months underwater to perform their duties.